today, we're jumping straight into a fantastic AliExpress find that could seriously change how you interact with your smart home. Let's see what we get. In the box, we'll find a manual, two screws, and a piece of double-sided tape for mounting. It doesn't require any cables as it uses Zigbee 3.0 for connectivity and runs on a standard CR2450 battery. And inside this bag, this is the Zemismart ZMR4. It's a wireless Zigbee scene switch, and trust me, it's more than just a remote. My favorite feature right out of the box is this magnetic wall mount. You can use it like a traditional wall switch, or just grab the remote and take it with you to the couch. Super versatile. This wall mount fits a standard US single gang electrical box. This allows you to install a smart module like the Sonoff ZB Mini Extreme to make your regular lights smart and control them with the Zemismart ZMR4. To start, pull the plastic strip to activate the battery. And here's where the magic happens. This device has four buttons. Each button supports a single press, a double press, and a long press. Four buttons, three actions each, that's 12 unique commands from a single compact remote. You can control lights, scenes, blinds, you name it. Once you open the battery compartment on the back, you'll find the CR2450 battery inside. It's designed for easy replacement, simply push down on the top edge of the battery and it will slide right out. Overall, the product features a simple yet highly accessible design. Now, let me show you how the magnetic case work. For this, let's open the case using a screwdriver. You'll find two magnets that are key to its design. They hold the device in position by attracting the metal CR2450 battery itself. This means the device can only be installed one way. Placing it upside down will not work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can also install it anywhere by using the double-sided tape included in the box. Alright, let's get this connected to Home Assistant via Zigbee 2 MQTT. For this, if you go to my website, you can use this button to open the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on page. In here, just click on Permit, Join All. And then, to put the device in pairing mode, we need to press and hold the first and second buttons until the LED at the top starts blinking. Then just release the buttons and wait for it to be configured by Zigbee 2 MQTT. And that's it! Once configured, the device is identified as the TS0044. This is another 4-gang wall switch. What likely occurred here is that the core Zigbee design was shared, perhaps licensed, but the final product was re-engineered to have a different form factor and features. You'll notice the manufacturer's branding says Tuya, not Zemismart. This is common because Tuya often licenses its established smart home designs and technology to various other brands, allowing them to implement and sell the product under their own name. Now, the first thing to do here is change its friendly name. This will allow us to find it easier under the MQTT integration in Home Assistant. Just make sure to check the Update Home Assistant Entity ID check box. Now, if we go to the Exposes tab, here we'll find its three main entities. The battery percentage that honestly I find not reliable at all on any Zigbee device for some reason, so I tend to ignore it. Then there is the link quality, the closer to 255, the better. And the action. This is the entity that will let us know which button an action was executed to trigger automations in Home Assistant. You can see that once I press a button, it changes quickly from the action to then an empty string. This is normal. Let's see how it is shown in Home Assistant. For this, go to Settings, Devices and Services, then MQTT. Here, you can find the device by the name you gave it before. And if you see the action entity under Events, you can see that it updates and retains the value from the last action executed. Now, one important thing that I want to mention that I find a little irritating is that the hold action is only triggered after you release the button. If you release it before the time it expects for a hold action, it will simply report a single press. 
I find I prefer the functionality of devices like the Akara buttons, which report distinct hold and release events. This approach offers greater flexibility as it allows the user to specifically define whether an action should trigger upon holding the button down or upon its release. This is a personal preference, but I wanted to mention it for clarity, as this device's behavior isn't immediately obvious. Other than that, the device feels really light in the hand, and its size is really easy to navigate and use any of the available buttons. Now, to use it in Home Assistant, we are going to use this blueprint created by ID Crook. To use it, you can use this button on my website. The setup is really simple. You just need to select the scene switch from the drop-down, in this case the ZMR4 action, and then just add the actions that you want to execute for any button press. To test this, I'm going to add the input boolean I created for my ultimate gaming automation that automatically triggers and sets up my Steam machine to play games in my living room. I used many tricks on that video and not many people have seen it, so I really encourage you to check it out if you want to get some tricks that you might want to use in your automations. Then just save it and let's test it. You can get the Zemismart ZMR4 using the affiliate links on the website. I hope this look at the device and its inner workings was helpful. If you enjoyed this detailed breakdown and want to support the channel, please consider becoming a member on Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can't become a member, you can always buy me one coffee using the button on my website. And if you can't do that, don't worry, just remember to leave a comment on the video and share it with your friends. I truly appreciate all your support and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next video.